Round one, fight! You okay? Hey guys, welcome back to an all new episode of Conflicts. Today we got ourselves the Unitree G1 to go and showcase today. Right, the same robot that we saw back at CES here in the flesh. <laughs> now, I'm actually super excited to show you everything about it, including some of the different features from moving capabilities to being able to fight it to simply just using simple gestures like a wave. Now, this robot is just an introductionary robot, meaning, in other words, in future, there's gonna be a lot more capabilities, including updates, dances, you name it. I'm super pumped up. Now, this particular robot did take some time to get here, and I have to say, I'm actually quite impressed the way it looks. It looks absolutely cool. Now, we reviewed a lot of humanoid robots in the past. Obviously, they are getting bigger and they are getting better, and this one here is definitely the highlight from what I've been seeing. Now, together we'll be unboxing it as well as trying it out, so if you guys want your very own, check out the link down below, and please hit that like and comment as well as subscribe button Post that little bell as well for future videos, particularly showcasing the new advancements and updates with the Unitree G1. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started. After many months, it is finally here, the same robotic company that also brought us the Go2. Now, the Go2 has been out for quite some time, and it's definitely evolved in LSSA. SSA. In fact, it itself is almost like a bipedal robot. For instance, it can stand. <laughs> now, this particular robot can also walk just like this, and I have to say, it's actually quite impressive on how much this robot has evolved. Now, when I first got this robot, it was still new to the market. In fact, it had just very basic animations, very similar to what the G1 is at the current moment. But now it is superb in this particular field, and I have to say I have high expectations for the G1. Now, they do say that the starting price is 16,000. However, that doesn't actually include the shipping fees, the taxes, and all the other different fees that would come with it. Uh, but all in all, it is still one of the cheapest humanoid robots on the market. So it comes in its own little crate uh, in which inside that crate contains this particular container. Now, it is designed to be able to transport. In other words, you have handlebars on both sides to go ahead and lift up, but it also has wheels with a little handlebar so you can go ahead and essentially take it about if you're like transporting it on an airport or anywhere in terms of that matters. Uh, it's nice case and definitely has a nice durable feel, similar to some of the other robots that we've seen before. Obviously, at this particular price point, it should come with its own container, so it is nice that it does. Now, the battery was shipped separately, so do keep that in mind that when you do get the robot, you're not actually getting it all in one. You do get the battery separate, and then uh, sometimes that might take a little bit more a day or two or extra. All right, so before we go ahead and open up the container, I wanted to show you some few different things. Now, one thing to note is that this here is the original controller for our Go2, and the newer one has a bit of a different presence. All right, so it'll come a little bit separated, so you just go ahead and screw these in. Very similar to like, a drone or things like that uh, definitely has an RC feel. And if you're looking at both particular controllers next to each other, you can see that obviously the go-to is a little bit more bigger. Uh, however, they both serve the same exact purpose where you can go ahead and control the particular robot. Now, it also has a sliding capability where you can go ahead and put some kind of device, be it a phone or a, like a tablet. And then it'll also have the shortcuts shown all over here. So with the shortcuts, you can see that there's different modes, including a locked standing, damping mode, seated mode, lie slash stand, squat slash stand, wave hand, handshake, turn around and wave, um, something with the waist, uh, keep stepping, low speed, high speed, high stepping, etc. So everything's pretty much on there. Uh, we also have an app which we'll be showcasing as well today. Aside from that, the next thing I want to show you in comparison between the Go2 and the G1 is the battery. Now, just looking at the two batteries side by side, they look very identical. In fact, they look almost exactly the same. However, if you go ahead and flip it over, you'll see that they do have some different ports. And this is very important because both batteries 
batteries are separate. You cannot interchange them at all. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but again, in terms of size wise, as well as weight, I have to say, they're about the same. Now it also comes with this harness. Uh, so from the looks of it, this can go ahead and attach onto the G1. Uh, if you're gonna go ahead and use a hoist or if you just go ahead and hold it, you can technically do it like that as well. So it's kind of the way to go ahead and control the robot so it doesn't fall flat on its face, uh, which has happened to me at CES when I was first using it as a practice run. So just keep in mind that one of the biggest errors with this particular robot will be human error and not necessarily the robot itself. The robot does have a variety of different sensors. However, as time goes on, we'll see those being unlocked and kind of being utilized for more different processes. Let's open this thing up. It's got two lock mechanisms. On the top here, you'll see you got your user manual uh, as well as a USB-A to USB-C cable. Then in terms of the user manual goes, talking about all the different things here. So we have ourselves a 3D LiDAR, a depth camera, shoulder joint, shoulder joint, elbow joint, elbow joint, waist joint, hip joint, hip joint, hand, hand, knee joint, ankle joint, ankle joint. Uh, and then there's also a head, microphone array, a speaker. Now in terms of field of view, this particular robot camera, it has a level up of 360 degrees and a maximum vertical angle of 59 degrees. And it has the capability to measure surrounding objects, providing high resolution point cloud data. So we got our charger. So a standard, almost like a three pin charger specifically for this particular robot, has an output of 54.6 voltage as a 5.5 amp. You'll see this robot taped in a variety of different bubble wrap. Just be careful essentially taking it out. So there's really like no right way of taking them out from what I'm seeing. Okay. Let's get them on a chair. Head. Let's remove this off. There's all the fun cameras and the LiDAR and all that right over there. So that's how it sees everything, uh, which is pretty cool. All right, so our buddy is finally set free and he looks so cool. Uh, definitely has that iRobot feel, very futuristic, very crazy and like kind of scary at the same time. So taking a closer look at him, uh, now he has 23 different servos. So this here's the basic model. So it has 23 degrees of freedom. So a lot of it can move and it can do a lot that you've probably seen before in other videos. The only thing that you're limiting is the, obviously with the, the arm, you can't expand on the hand. It doesn't have uh, those three digit fingers allowing you to go ahead and grab or do different things like that, but it can certainly shake your hand. <laughs> now, looking at the particular head itself, it's got a very small head that doesn't actually have any kind of joint where it can go and maneuver its head left or right, although that would be awesome. But there is actually a lot of technology up here, especially with the hollow display. You can see right here, we have our LiDAR, uh, we have our depth camera, uh, and it looks like three different cameras, four different cameras there kind of showcasing exactly what it can see in terms of a wide field of view. Now it also has a built-in speaker microphone so you can technically talk to it. And then future wise, they'll have AI built into it so you can go ahead and communicate with it and give it different commands. Now looking at these particular legs, you'll see that it's got a good amount of movement with it. Very tiny sized shoes. Uh, so you can go ahead and move its arms up and down, left and right, things like that. Uh, the wrist can also technically move over here where the forearm goes. Um, the head obviously cannot move as previously mentioned. You have these latches here to go ahead and mount on this particular bracket right over here. So if you wanna go ahead and hold it from the back, you can. Um, and then in terms of its waist goes, you only have that one degree of movement of waist. So it can't move left and right. It can only swing it rotational wise goes. So it says first thing you wanna do is make sure that it's in a sitting or boot up mode like this. So as if it's sitting in a chair, which it is. Uh, make sure that the hands are natural, the legs are natural, stuff like that. Installing the battery pack. So it's gonna be like this. Bring his arm up, push it in. One, two. 
I hear a fan kicking on, I see the blue LED. Definitely hear some things humming. L1 and A to enter dampening mode. I think we're in dampening mode. That says at this point, hold the G1 shoulder and press L1 on up to help him get up. Okay. Press R1 and X or R2 and X. He's alive! <laughs> All right, so a little bit different boot up process than what I'm used to, uh, but it is actually kind of interesting to see how that kind of plays out. He is pretty tall from what I'm seeing here. Uh, again, size of a child right over here. I'm, I'm, I'm about five foot 10, in case you're wondering about my particular height, but yeah, look at this guy. Definitely something out of the future. Uh, I love the whole, you know, aluminum look with the black tones. Definitely gives it a very futuristic feel. And yeah, a really cool looking robot. All right, so to kind of show you what I'm seeing over here. So this is the controls for this particular robot. So I can go ahead and move them around. So I said rotate them. Has a very smooth gait. Now one thing to know is that this particular robot is literally stomping its feet, but uh, it's actually really cool to see it kind of move about. Now I've seen other human robots before and this one actually has a very smooth movement. So we're gonna shake hands. There you go. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome to the family. Now I can go ahead and have him wave. Let's have him wave at the camera. So it's a select and Y. And then I can have him rotate around like this. And then I can do turn around and wave, which is a select and X. So it rotate its whole body to wave. Pretty trippy. <laughs> and then um, you have a different speed mode as well. So this here is obviously on the low from what it looks like. So let's double tap fast mode. This is high speed mode. So in terms of like actual pushing goes, you can see it's actually pretty good about correcting its balance. So if I push it, it'll automatically catch itself. Obviously if you push it too much, it'll tip over, but kind of gives you an idea on how that works. So. Oh, I just feel so wrong, but also very right. No, okay, just. <laughs> it's actually got a really good balance. Yeah, that's actually really cool. Okay. Good thing I caught that one. Okay, so we're gonna put him down on the ground. And from what I was told is that we can have him positioned anyway on the ground. And he'll get up. So let's try this out. So L1 and X. So it's gonna go and correct itself. And it should get back up. Perfect. <laughs> so this is a squat position. So you can see it squatting right over there. <laughs> And then to get back up, there we go, back up. Let's go ahead and open up the app next and see what that can do. I'm gonna go ahead and click and connect to our particular robot. It's configuring the Wi-Fi. Okay, successfully connected, coming soon. All right, so at the moment, it doesn't have anything in terms of connecting it via controlling it, like seeing what the robot sees. However, if I click on device here, I can click on data and click on robot, and this will actually show me all the different functions in terms of motor information on the particular robot. Uh, anything else 
In terms of calibration goes, we have remote control binding, we have battery, showing us the exact battery temperature, battery life. Um, this can actually automatic detect machine inspection, so hit start. We have voice assistant. Oh, so it has a built-in speaker. That's so cool. So it has its own built-in speaker in there so you can play music through it, you can talk through it, eventually, obviously, but it's still pretty cool for what it is. So this will show you the exact controller in terms of battery life, alarm information, service status update. So it's currently on the most updated version. Uh, we have our guide, our user manual for our robot, controller, stuff like that. Uh, tutorial video on how to go ahead and set this up, starting it up, debugging mode, calibration mode, network connection, remote binding. So yeah, I mean, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, again, you know, I love the fact that, you know, it's a great start for a particular robot of its capability. Obviously going forward, there's gonna be a lot more functions with this particular robot. We've seen some newer dances like this one right over here. them like can my robot actually perform that dance or does it have to be the educational model they said no this robot can do that so I'm excited how about you are you excited man that's as much as we can get right now <laughs> but yeah let's test out uh, this robots movement capability in terms of like if we have to push it or whatever I think that's what everybody wants to see right all right let's try this out okay so if I push them Oh, 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 you almost slipped there. It's actually pretty good. Not bad. So if I pull him. Yeah, okay, so you can't push him that hard. Good job, get up, get up, get up. Nice. All right, well there you guys have it. This here is a Unitree a G1. Uh, and yeah, obviously, you know, there's still a lot of development happening with this particular robot. You do see a lot of new updates coming up here and there. Uh, obviously, they're not yet available to the public, but when they are, I'll definitely be showing it on my channel. So with that said, what do you guys think? Did you guys like this robot? Comment down below. Otherwise, see you in the next video. Take care now, bye-bye.